right, well hello, uh, I'm Mrs. Cresswell. I teach uh, agriculture at the Upper Sandusky High School. I teach the FFA program and I have with me today. I'm Kim Harvey, I teach sixth grade science in Cardington, uh, FFA alumni and proud supporter. So today we're going to show you a little bit about what to do if you want to do a stream study. I know one of the courses I teach in my class is water quality. And in order to determine water quality, one of the best ways to do it is to see what's living in the stream or creek that you have nearby. So what we're going to be looking at today is the Sandusky River. And we are at Stepping Stones Park here in Upper Sandusky. It's called Stepping Stones because the Wyandotte Indians uh, actually had stones that they put across the river to get from bank to bank when they had the reservation here. This was the last uh, Wyandotte Indian reservation in Ohio. So the Sandusky River flows north into Lake Erie. We have two major watersheds in Ohio, one being the water that runs down into the Mississippi River into the Gulf of Mexico. And then we have the rivers here in the northwest part of Ohio and northern Ohio that flow into Lake Erie. So State Route 309, which a lot of you are familiar with, is pretty close to what we call the divide in Ohio. It divides the waters that flow south with the waters that flow north. So Upper Sandusky is called Upper Sandusky because we are upriver from Sandusky. So a lot of people are always confused. They think Upper Sandusky is north when in reality our river flows north and we are upriver. So this is the Sandusky River. We're gonna be doing a water quality test on today. All right, so in order to determine water quality, we have to look for the organisms that live in the water. They're gonna live here full time. So if there's any amount of pollution, the very sensitive ones are gonna disappear first. And so we wanna look in the areas of the stream that are the most sensitive, which are gonna be the riffle areas. So within a stream, you have smooth water and deeper water that are pools, and then you have this kind of white watery type water that are your riffles. Higher in oxygen, better for predators, and so this is where we're gonna look for our organisms at. And you can see that Kim down here has got a saying. This is what we're gonna to use to catch the organisms with. It has really, really small openings because these macro invertebrates that we're gonna be catching are really tiny. So I'm at the top of the riffle, Kim's at the bottom of the riffle, and we're gonna kick through here, it's called kick saning. We're gonna kick through the rocks and the sand and the pebbles that are on the substratum here to have then the organisms flow into the net to see what we can catch. graders I have a simplified version of the paperwork that is used with older kids that help us to sort the macro invertebrates that we have found into these three groups based on water quality. The macro invertebrates that are down here in group three can live in a pretty polluted body of water. The macro invertebrates in group two need their water to be a little cleaner and if we're finding animals that live in, that are in group three those live in really clean water so uh, this is what we're hoping to find is a lot of macro invertebrates from this area. Now what we see Mrs. Cresswell doing is looking through here and she is dropping them into these tubs that are labeled as one, two, and three. So if we know what they are right away, we can go ahead and start sorting them by their taxa group, get them back in the water so we can take a closer look and look at our numbers. Um, if we're not sure, there's one with a question mark and then we can take a little closer look at some of our photos and our examples that we brought with us to identify those macro invertebrates. Oh, what's this little guy? This looks like it might be a mayfly. Yeah, there's a lot of riffle. Uh, these got all be riffle beetles. I think that's a mayfly. Okay. 
Yeah, put him in one, and if he's wrong, I'll move him out. He was small, so I couldn't see his tail. First. Yeah, that's why you got to get him in the water, and then they're easier to see their tail. Okay, as you can see, there's a three on the bottom of this container, and these are in taxa three. These are animals that are going to be very tolerant to pollution. So we have aquatic worms. Uh, these are not the ones that you would find in the soil. They look a lot like our, our worms that we see when we're digging in the garden or in the field, but these are going to live in water. And we see planaria worms here, and if you take a look there, you can see that there's a little arrow-shaped head and tiny little eye spots there. Not that they have vision, but they're sensitive to light and dark so they can tell whether they're in or out. They have a little feeding tube on their belly. It kind of looks like a little elephant's trunk and they're going to eat a lot of the dead stuff that's in the water. Um, but these little guys, uh, you'll find snails in a couple of different groups because there are two different kinds of snails. If you hold it up this way, point up. A little hard to see that the opening is on the left. So this is a pouch snail. This is one that is very tolerant to living in polluted water. If its opening was on the right, then it would need to be a cleaner environment. Uh, so I'm gonna drop that back in there. So if we only found these guys, you'd probably want to get out of that water and, and look into what we can do to help that environment because it is very polluted. Um, but the, these are not the only macroinvertebrates that we found today. So the class three, uh, you're going to find them even if the water is really, really good. So like we were saying, if this is all you found, that's a problem. But if the water is really good, you're still going to find these guys. So that's what you're taking a look at. And there's some other ones that are in group three, but these are the ones we found today. Group two taxa. So these are going to be able to live in intermediate water. So they can live in good water and they can live in intermediate. So we have some things that kind of look like worms, but this is a crane fly larva. And I think it's really unique. Everybody always wonder, well, what in the world are crane flies? Well, this is eventually going to hatch out into those big mosquito-y looking type things that fly around uh, that actually are not mosquitoes. People think they're giant mosquitoes, but they actually eat mosquitoes. So this is a crane fly larvae, and it's amazing this ugly, nasty thing can hatch into something that's so delicate like a crane fly. So those will probably hatch yet this fall with as large as they are. We have clams. To count a clam, you have to make sure that it's actually alive. And these are tiny little fingernail clams. You can tell that the shell is uh, shut. And if I would try to force it open, um, I probably couldn't or I would break it and kill the clam. So that clam is counted because he is alive. There is a clam shell in here that's just half of it. We can't count that because it's not living. The other neat critter that we have is this dragonfly larvae. Some of these different dragonfly species can live five, six years in the water before they finally crawl up out of the water and they'll hatch just like a cicada does. Uh, they'll hatch into the dragonflies that you see flying around the water. These guys are predators. They eat mosquito larvae. They eat all different types of things. If you get a larger one, you'll be able to actually see his mouth will open up right there and he can actually grab his food and bring it into his mouth to eat it. So this guy still has quite a few years left in the water, but that's a dragonfly larvae. And that's what we have in group two from the looks of it. These are our tax one, uh, group one taxa. These are the really cool ones to find. And we found some interesting ones today. So as you take a look in here, you can see things are kind of moving around. They're settling on the snails that are in there. So you have to stir them up a little bit. But uh, right here we have a mayfly. You can see them moving around. Mayflies, there's a lot of different species, but they're easy to identify because they have three tails. And the way I remember that is the word may is spelled M-A-Y, has three letters in it. And so the mayfly itself has three tails. There are some other um, macroinvertebrates you're gonna find like the stonefly. We didn't find one today, but it can look similar. It only has two tails when it spreads it out. Now this mayfly, you might say, oh, I only count two tails. Well, he lost a tail. And there is one species of mayfly that does only have two, so that does make it a little more difficult. But you can tell by how they swim, too, that they are mayflies. Mayflies usually live less than 24 hours after they hatch out, and uh, they, a lot of the species don't even eat. They reproduce and die. We talked about snails in group three. This is what we call a good water quality snail. If you hold it with the point up, you can see the opening is on the right. So this snail breathes with gills, and because it breathes with gills, it's a lot more sensitive to pollution, whereas those pouch snails in three don't have gills, and so they're able to withstand the, the pollutants. 
We have caddisflies. They kind of curl up into a C when you put them on your hand. And that's how I remember caddisflies curl up into C's because there are beetle larvae that also look like caddisflies. These guys can build their own homes out of sticks, leaves, uh, pieces of gravel. The ones we have here are the free swimming ones. They can be different colors. Sometimes in the fall we find green ones, but this is your caddisfly larvae. Most of these things we find in the water are gonna eventually hatch out and fly around in the air, and caddisflies will do that. One of the few adults we find in the water are these little guys right here. This is a riffle beetle, and this is all the bigger they get. They are an adult, and, you, and it's kind of hard sometimes to tell if you have a riffle beetle or a beetle that fell in from the trees. And you have to look, does he look like he's at home in the water or does he look like he's drowning? Uh, this one's definitely at home. He's happy being down there moving around. So that's a riffle beetle. And then our most favorite one. You want to talk about the water penny? Oh, go he's right pretty ahead. cool. He is. Looks like a little turtle shell. So this is a water penny. They can get a little larger. They're called water pennies because they're circular and copper colored. Uh, when you flip them over is when you actually see, and you won't be able to see because he's so tiny, but he's got his little legs and everything underneath there. And he is a beetle larva. Eventually he's going to hatch out into a beetle. But these guys will stay suctioned to the bottom of rocks. And when you put them on your finger, you can feel their little feet moving on your finger, moving along um, as they start to crawl around. Kind of like a horseshoe crab does. Um, so kind of a neat little... Uh, animal that we have there. Now we call all these macro invertebrates because they're invertebrates, they don't have backbones, uh, and they're macros, so we can see them. Uh, micro invertebrates would be tiny, we wouldn't be able to see them, but this is what we're going to be looking at. These guys can't move very far, unlike fish that can swim from place to place if there's pollution, or um, you know, other like your salamanders, they can move, your turtles. So that's why we look at these guys, because they are living in the water on a day-to-day -day basis, and they have to put up with the quality that's there. So what we find is going to determine what the average water quality is in that section of stream that we're testing. So there are a lot of different forms you can fill out if you do water quality. Uh, this is one that I've modified for my classroom. Uh, you can go online to the Ohio Department of Natural Resources, Save Our Streams, Isaac Walton League, all of those different groups and download the different macroinvertebrate tallies. I combine it with uh, some of the descriptions, physical descriptions, and also then our chemical tests that we take. That way we can compare from year to year our location and also what we found. And so as you take a look in here, we have our turbidity that we've measured, our nitrates, our dissolved oxygen, and our pH. So if you look at some of these numbers, uh, you know, some of them are not the greatest dissolved oxygen being one that's, that's not real good. And turbidity, because of the rain, is, is not great right now. But then if we go down here and we look at our macroinvertebrates, the way we score these, we have our group ones, twos, and threes. Group ones are going to be worth a value of three points each because they're only found in good water quality. Group two get a value of two points each and group one a value of one because they can live wherever. It doesn't really matter what the water is. So we found three different types of group three taxa. We found the aquatic worms and planaria. We found pouch snails and we found, did find one leech. And so our total score for the group three is going to be a three. Under the group two, we found dragonflies, craneflies, and clams. So we end up with three different taxa. A value of two gives us a total of six. Now these letters here are just indicative of what, how many did we find? An A is one to nine, a B is 10 to 99, and a C is above 100. That's just an estimate. We don't care if we find one or 100 as long as we find one. But this helps us from year to year to see what we're finding. The group one then, we found the water pennies, the mayflies, caddisflies, riffle beetles, and other snails. And so we found five different taxa times three gives us 15. So when I add all of these up, I end up with a cumulative index value of 24, which is really, really good. So you can see here our stream quality assessment is going to be excellent. So based on the score you get, you can get poor, fair, good, or excellent.